Senator Schumer with the semiconductor work uh, with uh, Senator Young, the work that Senator Stabenow has done on the Farm Bill over and over again, the work that Senator Heinrich has done on conservation, passing a major bill. This is possible, and we have to do it across the aisle. And I have been so impressed so far sitting in on the briefing, looking forward to the one today, how people are trying to find that common ground. We as a country can't afford to just duke this out and fight it out and not move forward, not only for the innovation that my colleagues mentioned and the potential, but also for the risks, the great risks for a country that is built on intellectual property and innovation, not protecting that. Uh, would be a major disaster for our economy. The security risks, uh, where we know people would try to access all kinds of secrets and other things uh, using this technology. And the one risk that I'm going to focus on as the chair of the Rules Committee, which is the very risk to our democracy. What have we seen so far? Well, in our hearing in the Judiciary Committee, when I specifically asked Chat GPT, where, what should we do about a polling place that has significant waiting lines in Bloomington, Minnesota, had a specific polling place that was real, where should voters go? It immediately spit out 1234 Elm Street. Not a real address, not an address in Bloomington, Minnesota. Think about if that happened on Election Day. Then we have the story of Elizabeth Warren, uh, where a video has been circulated, 200,000 people seen it on Twitter, uh, that basically has her saying, and you cannot tell it's not her, that the other party uh, shouldn't vote, that people who are members of the other party shouldn't vote. She didn't say that. Then you already have videos posting in the Republican primary that are false videos, and now you have banter AI coming out, uh, which can actually mock up the voices of the president and other elected officials and make their constituents think that it's them. This does not have a place in a workable democracy. And that is why I've been working across the aisle and as part of this esteemed group uh, that Senator Heinrich and Senator Schumer are leading um, to work on this election issue. We had just saw a deadlock out of the FEC uh, when it came to making some uh, decisions about how to regulate this. Yes, some of it has to have marks and labels on it. We already have a bill to do that. Um, but some of it is going to have to be outright banned or it's going to completely fool our constituents on both sides of the aisle. Um, and that cannot have a place, that kind of disinformation in our democracy. So, yes, we're going to have some great innovations, and there's great possibilities here. But there is no reaping these benefits if we let the work of defending and strengthening our democracy fall by the wayside. That's why we can't drag our heels, and I appreciate Senator Schumer's leadership and his willingness to take this on on a bipartisan basis. I have breaking news to share with you this Saturday. The Social Security reform debate is now heating up on Capitol Hill. Lawmakers are now weighing if raising taxes and increasing the full retirement age is the answer to save Social Security. Proposals from both parties are also being considered. Friends, I'll be going over how this may affect you. So please make sure that you watch until the end of this video. Also, do stay tuned because I'll be announcing the winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the weekly giveaway, friends, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, friends, the greater your chances of winning these giveaways. When it comes to Social Security benefits, a key deadline is looming. Benefits may be reduced in the next decade if no action is taken sooner. This week, the Senate Budget Committee met on Capitol Hill to consider the dilemma facing the program with a focus on a key question. So that question is, should payroll taxes be adjusted to make it so the wealthy pay more into the program? The latest projections from the Social Security Board of Trustees shows that the program's combined funds may run out in 2034, at which point 80% of benefits will be payable. The fund used to pay retirement benefits may run out even sooner. In 10 years, 
in 2033. Then at which point only 77% of those benefits would then be payable. During a Senate hearing, Social Security Administration Chief Actuary Stephen Goss stated that Social Security is a pay-as-you-go program. In 2023, up to $160,200 in earnings are subject to Social Security payroll taxes. In 1983, when major legislation was enacted to shore up Social Security's trust funds, 90% of covered earnings fell below the taxable maximum. As of the year 2000, that dropped to 82.5%. Since then, it has remained at about that same level. Senate Buddy Committee Chairman Sheldon Whitehouse touted his bill, which is called the Medicare and Social Security Fair Share Act. This legislation would require wages above $400,000 to be taxed for Social Security. Senator Whitehouse has said the bill aims to correct other unfair features of the system. Under the bill, those with more than $400,000 in investment income would contribute to Social Security in the same way as those who earn wages. Importantly, the bill does not propose any benefit cuts. So other Democrats also support the idea of making higher earners pay a larger share into the program. Representative John Larson and Senator Richard Blumenthal reintroduced the Social Security 2100 Act. The bill with more than 200 Democratic House co-sponsors also calls for applying Social Security payroll taxes to earnings of more than $400,000. Senator Bernie Sanders and Elizabeth Warren have also introduced a separate bill that would instead apply Social Security payroll taxes to incomes over $250,000, while also having the wealthy pay taxes on their investment and business income. This would also expand benefits by $200 a month. Recent polls have shown that raising the Social Security payroll tax cap is also popular with the public. Yet at the recent Senate hearing, some leaders and experts questioned whether that is the right approach. Democrats' proposal would push the marginal tax rate to over 50 percent, and many would break President Biden's promise not to raise taxes on anyone making less than $400,000 a year. Experts who testified at the Senate hearing were also divided on whether higher taxes are the right strategy to pursue to fix the program. The next cost of living increase for Social Security recipients is projected to be slightly better than previously estimated, but still the lowest in years. The Senior Citizens League had estimated in mid-June that 2024's COLA increase could be somewhere between 2.7%. That is a huge drop-off from 2023's 8.7% increase. The latest, slightly larger estimate comes despite cooling inflation, which generally has the opposite effect on Social Security benefit adjustments. For instance, soaring prices on consumer goods and services in 2022 fueled 2023's benefit increase of 8.7% to keep pace with inflation. Officials have announced that Social Security benefits have lost about a third of their buying power since the year 2000, even when accounting for every COLA increase over the last 22 years. Friends, please comment below how inflation has affected your finances and if you think monthly benefits should be expanded by at least $200 a month. Well, my magnificent and most marvelous friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Saturday. My dearest friends, thank you so much for joining me here and for being part of this community. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I will be announcing winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway every Friday. Remember, if you'd like to enter these giveaways, 
All you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on friends, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. The two winners of yesterday's Walmart gift card giveaway is Regina Ural and Diane Randall. Congratulations, my dearest friends. To claim your gift cards, please check your notifications page and send me a message. Or you could message me on my Facebook page. Thank you, friends, and have a wonderful and very blessed weekend.